Hello, I'm Candace Arian and welcome to the 2013 Dallas International Film Festival. I am here with Brian Poiser and we are going to talk about his film, The Bounce Back. So, Brian, thank you so much for coming today. Absolutely. We are very excited to have you here. Cool. And as we were just discussing, this is your second trip to Dallas with a film in the festival. But, of yeah. course, you have been a fan and an attendee yeah. for several years. So, yeah. anything new, different, exciting about this year in particular? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's just great to see the festival continuing um, to grow and, like, attract people from, like, just earlier I ran into this friend of mine who's another filmmaker is going to be here called the Rambler and I had no idea that he was going to be here and, oh, yeah. and there he was and so it's it's just great to kind of ha take it as an opportunity to reconnect with other filmmakers that I've met through the festival circuit and stuff like that so yeah, yeah that's cool it's always a reunion yeah you know yeah. and it's nice because you kind of re recollect where you were with them before and yeah. then where you are now yeah. and, and to that point it's interesting to kind of think back on all those thoughts and yeah. I was curious about the creation of the film what yeah. were some of those originating thoughts to you know for the writing because you were yeah. writer on it and everything so yeah well th this is actually it's my third feature but it's the first one that I didn't write all myself right um, the script actually was written by these two guys Stephen Walters who actually lives here in Dallas um, and Dave Shotwell um, so they did the first drafts and then it came to me um, through some producers after my my last film played at Sundance in 2010 um, and I just really liked the script it was you know it's kind of a crazy romantic comedy set in Austin about, um, but it's really more of a movie about um, the moving on from a breakup than the actual breakup. It's about these two couples that, um, two ex-couples that end up in Austin on the same weekend mm -hmm. and are sort of like trying to find each other or avoid each other or ruin each other's lives. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know, it just really kind of spoke to me and, and, you know, made me think about all the stupid things that I did throughout my 20s trying to like, you know, find the right person for me, um, all the, you know, emotional wreckage that I, that I left behind. <laughs> yes, quintessential <laughs> and, 20s, right? Yeah, yeah, so, um, so yeah, so I, I was really intrigued by it, and, and, and so we worked on the script for a while, mm -hmm. um, for about a year, and, uh, and then we started casting, and that took almost a whole year also, just because, no well, it's an en ensemble movie, there's right. like six leads in the movie, so, one of the things I discovered when you're, you know, casting for people, you know, names or people who are, you know, have name or face recognition, mm -hmm. you know, actors who have, you know, um, careers, uh, it's really hard to find actors who are both good and then also available and also available at the same time as all <laughs> the other, like, five people that you're trying to cast. Um, so, uh, but then the cast that we end up, ended up with was just fantastic, mm -hmm. like, we've got, um, Michael Saul David, who uh, was in Cloverfield, who was the lead in Cloverfield, yeah. and Ashley Bell, um, who's in two movies here at Diff. She's also in Chasing Shakespeare. Um, so she starred in the last Exorcism movies. Um, Sarah Paxton, who uh, was in this great independent horror film, The Innkeepers. Um, and, uh, and this guy, Zach Kreger, who's on a TV show called Guys With Kids right now, and mm -hmm. it's super funny. Um, so, so the cast that we ended up with was just fantastic, and I think they really kind of got what the movie was about as well and you know really wanted to like kind of capture that um you know awkward awkward unfortunate time in your 20s when yeah. you're just really you know kind of out of control so i thought it was hilarious you know the scene where they recognize that oh my gosh what are you doing here and why yeah. are you here and yeah you know i thought the the acting in that was just fantastic and i yeah. think on set that must have been pretty humorous you know just kind of oh yeah things that you yeah chose. I mean making the movie was just such a blast I mean we like the you know we shot the movie in Austin in a lot of the places the actual places where these scenes yeah. are supposed to take place and that was oh. a really deliberate choice that we wanted to not yeah. make up any places you know it's like if they're gonna go to a honky-tonk bar then they're gonna go to this place the broken spoke in Austin mm -hmm. that's been there for 50 years um, and uh, so so the so the actors, who none of whom were really from Austin or had spent a ton of time there, really kind of fell in love with the place as we were there. And like our crew, you know, they were really tight with our crew. They all would go party at the end of every night. I would go home and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just wasn't up for that kind of thing. But um, but it's good because yeah. they were able to bond. And yeah, that's yeah. so important. Yeah, and that's what we did. Um, you know, in the beginning of the movie when we finally got them all together is we mm. just, I just tried to spend as much time with them together and have them do silly things like, like 
going to karaoke was one of the first things that we did together as a cast, just because it's Any like... behind the uh, scenes on that one? No, no, we, we, we didn't start filming that one yet. <laughs> but, uh, but it was really, it was a great way to sort of bond and like kind of get us all looking ridiculous in front of each other, which is what you kind of have yeah. to do when you're making a movie. It's right. like you got to be free and, hap and happy and open to doing that. Um, and one of the cool things that happened is uh, one of the ex-couples in the movie actually ended up becoming a real couple. No so kidding. So they're, they're dating now, um, oh. which, is, which is kind of awesome. So and the I feel, opposite sparks I feel, helped. Yeah, I, I feel responsible to some degree for that. You have worked in Austin primarily mm -hmm. for this film. Is one of the indie film markets, you yeah. know, one of the top ones. You yeah. have been so graciously given wonderful awards. Yeah. Um, you know, what would you say for um, upcoming indie filmmakers? You know, what is something that you see in them that you want to encourage, and what is yeah. something that you've learned that you want to say, watch out for this? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I would say you know one of the best things about the independent film world community is that it really is a community mm -hmm. and especially here in Texas it's a very strong close-knit very supportive community you know it's like one of the other reasons why I love coming up to uh, to diff is because there are all these other filmmakers mm -hmm. in the Dallas Fort Worth area that I'm s super good friends with um, that I've met through other film festivals that have helped me on uh, my films um, I've helped them on their films um, and so I think as an independent filmmaker, one of the things that you want to try to do is find that community for yourself. You know, find yeah. those people yeah. who are going to be your support system as you go forward in this career because it's, it's hard. There's a lot of like toil and a lot of disappointments on the way. And so it's like you need a support group essentially yeah. to kind of like go through that. Um, you know, and then also I, I would say, uh, you know, just you know, with your first feature, which was very hard for me to make, I made it about 10 years ago, um, you know, and, and that was like almost 10 years outside of film school that I finally made it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I would say with your first feature, try to, try to not be too ambitious, because just making a feature film is ambitious on its own. Yeah. Um, so if you make something, if you try to make something, if you try to design something that you can do well with however much money you have, which is probably very, very little, um, then you're going to go a long way, I think, towards being able to just really focus on the stuff that's important, which is the acting and the writing, you know, and trying to make a movie that, you know, is going to try to compete with Hollywood movies in terms of production value. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're probably going to lose that battle. Um, so, so you want to just focus on the stuff that they don't do well, which is have good stories and good, believable characters mm. that we can relate to and, and, and good acting. So, so that would be my advice. Well, well said. Well, thank you yeah. so much. Oh, cool. We appreciate Thanks. you being here, Brian, and everybody. Go see The Bounce Back. Uh, it's going to be at the fe festival, of course, so check your listing and uh, website. What is it? Uh, we don't have a website. We do have a Twitter handle. The underscore bounce back and then we're on Facebook too. Perfect. So check us out. Check.